this strike is without doubt the most important dispute that our trade union movement has faced since the miners' strike in 1974. First and foremost, it's about trade union rights, but it's also about the exploitation of immigrant workers. And lined up against us on the other side is all those elements in this country that would like to see us be driven back to a position that we were in a hundred years ago. They not only picked upon one of the bravest groups of strikers that our movement has seen for a long time, they've now picked upon our entire trade union movement. My birthday is on the 10th of July and I was 21. And the next morning I got up very early in the morning. I had about 50p in my pocket, which was enough to buy a ticket to Dollis Hill. And I went to this, this uh, day of action and it was, it was quite amazing because there were people pouring in, mostly men, mostly male, mostly white trade unionists, pouring in from all sides. You know, these are the back streets of London. It's not like a huge open area with big, uh, you know, highways and things. You wouldn't expect a major strike that took international attention to be, you know, taking place over there. Well, I was involved because um, I was a writer and I was covering the dispute, but also I was a supporter of the strike. So um, I got drawn into uh, being there in solidarity. When the negotiations had broken down, the Grandwick strikers called for support from the rank and file. And so you had workers at all levels of British industry who responded to this call. And that made an enormous difference to the strike. To me, it was a straightforward uh, situation where you had people that were not getting their union rights, they were underpaid and overworked, and they weren't allowed to go and have um, prenatal care, postnatal care, no time off. We used to pick the mail up from Gromwick, and uh, we had approached from Mrs. Asai if we would help them by not delivering the mail. The branch agreed that we wouldn't cross the picket line and that we would accept the mail in, but we wouldn't uh, forward it on. Everyone who was anyone knew about it. So let's say everyone who was in the trade union movement or involved in any kind of left-wing organisation knew about it. Me and three friends lived in a flat in Council Rise, which is a few miles away. We all had to be in work at nine in the morning. We thought nothing of getting up at six, coming up here, standing at those gates for a couple of hours. We thought nothing of it. There were dockers and post office workers and miners and all sorts of people. It was an amazing moment and I remember it particularly because what we'd known about the dockers, what we'd heard about them was that they were racist. You know, they, they were famous for having marched when Enoch Powell had made his inflammatory speeches about rivers of blood and so on. And my abiding memory is that these white men had come in solidarity with Asian women. And in order to, to protect the idea of solidarity itself. You were here. It shows you that there can't be more than a couple of hundred of us. We were here. And then if the gates were there, when you're talking a couple of hundred people and hundreds of others lined up on either side because they don't want to get arrested, which is fine, that's not a problem. I think there were dockers, you know, standing around me and they were saying, put your hands up and they were sort of showing me how to create a space so that I could, because I literally was being crushed. And, you know, they said, put your hands up so that you can, you know, keep off, you know, the space off your chest and be able to breathe. And I was not on my feet some of the time. I mean, I'd actually been lifted by the crush and they helped me to survive it. There are all the police buses down there. And then, you see the bus coming down the road. And the next thing, everybody's linked arms. And that's it, hold tight, hang on to your hat. Put your seatbelt on, 
because here come the police. The police were really pushing, and just the press of people on those small streets was pushing us. I went down on the floor. There were people in heaps on the floor. There was punching and kicking and gouging, and a cop pulled me up, dragged me up, did the hands behind me, up the arm up the back routine, got me on the police bus. He can't have been more than, he's probably five years, six years older than me. And um, he took his, <laughs> he took his hat off and he looked at me and said, thank fuck we're out of that. When you go to a mass picket about 20 times and never miss one, you like to think and like to say that at the end we scored. But well, we didn't. That dispute was winnable and defeat was snatched from the jaws of victory. You had an, an amazing situation developing here. And we've got to ask ourselves why did the state um, and the trade union leadership and the owners collaborate in this way? And I think the answer is that there was a potentially revolutionary situation developing. Because so remember, in these strikes, all the echelons of the state were together, you know. Don't forget that. The police decided they were going to get their own back on one or two people that had been pushing and shoving a little bit too much. And that's when they practiced kettling at Grumwick. I've never seen it before. I mean, the police did what was asked of them, and there was a right-wing entity to it all. It was like a battle against the Tory party that was now run by Mrs. Thatcher, Sir Keith Joseph, and a lot of other right-wingers that were determined that given the chance to get power, they were going to smash the trade unions. This was a testing ground, in my opinion. It seemed like it was the start of a very long backlash. And in fact, it's something else. It's like a counter-revolution against the whole practice of unionism. And that is still going on. So even though there's a revival of some forms of union activism, we're still in the middle of a huge squeeze on being able to mobilize in ways that express our solidarity. I see what's going on and I think protesting is even a lot harder now than it used to be. The things that went on on that picket line, I mean, policemen getting punched and kicked and protesters obviously getting punched and kicked. And it was seen as part of it, but now, now you can just jump up and down and shout on the street and you can be put away for two years for a conspiracy, you know. Who's to say that we're not in a similar phase now? I mean, things happen differently. We don't have the same type of skilled industrial uh, workers. Uh, we don't um, have the same framework for, for work, as it were. But maybe there's other aspects, you know. You have students who are facing a very neoliberal education system who have come out in the past in large numbers. And you have um, low-paid workers again. And wherever there's exploitation, people will rise up.